Hawk, Hawk the Slayer, um, a tale of sword and sorcery. It's been 30 odd years since uh, I've 35. seen the movie, 35. Well, you know, for me, you know, when I was a, a little kid, it probably going about 30 years perhaps, but tell us more, just remind us what, what the movie's about and why it's here. Well, it's here, really, I think, because of the, the, the fan base. I mean, the whole, the whole last six months have been taken up by people bombarding us with questions about all this. I don't know why, but bombarding us with questions about it. Could you sign this? Could you sign that? You know, uh, where can we get the LP, which Harry produced, which was fantastic LP. And gradually, it, it, you know, there's sort of been a, I don't know, a fan base movement. We suddenly went from Hulk the Slayer to cult movie. How that happens, I don't know. And, you know, there was a lot of discussion about, well, why don't we do a sequel? And then I said, well, the sequel's already written. We, we wrote it in 1981, when we thought we were going to get released in America. But at that point, ITC collapsed. We never got the release. So we pulled out the, uh, the sequel. I, I re-looked at it, made some changes, showed it to a few people. Mainly, there was a lot of interest in a television series from Content. It's a big company here we, we, who work with us. They took it to a lot of festivals and said, would you be interested in the series? And they, there was a lot of interest, but they said, you know, 35 years? We need to see something. Well, we, we could either make a show reel for a few thousand quid, or we could go for, you know, a small movie. We were very fortunate to have a rebellion come on board, the games people. They became one of our major investors. It left a tiny, small amount of money to get from the Kickstarter campaign. If we get that, we're off and running. So, why do you think there should be a sequel, ultimately? Uh, why do I think? I don't, it's not me asking for it, it's the fans. The fans want it? The fans want it, yeah. They constantly go on asking me questions about, well, what happened? What happened to Hulk? What happened to... Does Voltan come back? And clearly there are enough fans that want it to come back for you to say, yes, let's, let's actually make it. It's not something that's niche. Uh, I think so. I mean, the proof will be the uh, Kickstarter campaign. If enough, of, if enough of the fans get into it, then we'll know we've got a project. I think if it failed, or we only got a few people, we wouldn't carry on. What is it about fantasy movies like that that has so much appeal? And I want to I wanna ask this question based on the now, because in the last 30 years, we've not really had movies like that. I remember Conan Barbarian, I remember Krull. Krull is a big, big favourite movie of mine. I love those films. And for me, when I think about it now, I think they were movies of the time. People really wanted them then. Then we move on sort of 30 years later. They weren't, there weren't so many of them, apart from maybe Lord of the Rings. So what... It is, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what do you think has happened in terms of like audience demand in that time? What happened? I don't know. I think the reason that Hawk has lasted so long is because it's a family movie. I mean, they have a great saying in America when they talk about four cues, old, young, male, female, which Hawk is. It's a four cue movie. And I have no intention of making the sequel other than that. I mean, we'll go for a 12-12A, you know, and our, and our sort of, hopefully, our distribution arrangements will be based on a family audience. So four people go to see that, maybe five. It can show on television. It's got an extended life. I think that this type of sword and sorcery, what I call the before watershed sword and sorcery, it's got a great opportunity out there. It's, there's a hole and no one's filled it. And I think we can fill it. Some great English actors in Hawk the Slayer, weren't there? Are you planning to keep the English act acting centric in the, in, the, in the sequel too? Absolutely. I mean, the whole idea is to try and do what we did in Hawk the Slayer. We have the same sort of um, individual moments with actors. Oh, bye, sorry. I'll just say goodbye to Ray Charles and Crow, our killer elf. Bye, Ray. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we have lists now of everybody we'd like to offer it to, and some of the old cast as well. But we won't do that until we know we've got the money because this business is so, can be so disappointing for people. You know, you can talk a project, talk a project, you can interview actors. If you haven't got the money, and you, at the end of it, you've got to turn around to them and say, guys, we didn't make it. They've all got themselves excited. Everybody wants to do it, and you fail. Will, it be, will, will a lot of the setting be in Britain? No, we're going to shoot it in Lithuania this time because uh, I've shot there a lot. I did a series there a couple of years ago with uh, Warner Brothers and quite frankly I can get a lot of bang for my buck there. So and some of the sets that I need to build, you know, are quite extensive. So it's got to be there. I'm Ideally, when might it come out? If we go ahead, we think 
uh, Joe Demora, who's our uh, uh, distributor guy. I think we're late summer, uh, and it'll be a special, you know, an event, probably somewhere like 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock on a Sunday, that type of showing. So mum and dad, kids, go and have a good time. Should be good. Next year. Next year. Hawk the Slayer, a tale of sword and sorcery. Yes. Tell us more for, for the people that haven't seen it for maybe 25 odd years. Well, it's, I think it's been going for about 35 years, but Hawk the Slayer was, um, was the beginning of it all. It was before the Lord of the Rings and all of that, you know? And it was done on a budget, okay? But it was, there was so much energy and belief in that film that we carried it off, you know? Um, um, Jack Palance was the villain, um, and it had half the Royal Shakespeare Company playing the bit parts, okay? And uh, I, I played a, an elf, an archer elf, a killer, who, who had this uh, ability to rapid fire a thousand arrows, I don't know. But it, you know, had, had uh, the special effects been different like nowadays, but uh, I mean, it's just a fun film, you know, it's a, it's a cult film, and I, I really enjoy doing it. Do you see it though as a, as a horror? Because it's quite a nice sword sorcery movie, isn't it? That, that, that tries to appeal to families, perhaps? I wouldn't put it in horror. I, I think it's fun. It's it's fun, and uh, you don't see blood, you don't see guts. Um, I mean, you see arrows sticking in guys, and but you don't see arms chopped off and that kind of. You don't see you know arteries being severed and all that. You know, um, and it was fun. That's that's what I got to tell you. As an actor in the film, it was fun. Now the sequel. Why should there be one? Because everybody liked the first one so much, and they want to see they want to see an updated version. Okay, I think that's what it is, and. I got a part, man, so it's got to happen, right? <laughs> I need the wedge. <laughs> Paycheck. The other thing is, is that, you know, I recall the days of, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, I think when I watched Conan Barbarian, Krull, yeah, yeah. films like that. I loved those movies. Yeah. I loved Krull. It's a big favorite of mine, actually. Yeah. Often still on the TV. It, it did, yes. I think 1983 sometime uh, it came, or maybe, maybe earlier, I don't know. But those kind of films, I, I thought, at the, were, were of the time. People loved those kind of mystical movies of sword and sorcery what do you think that the audience will audiences today will welcome that yes fantasy fantasy everybody wants to get out of here you know what i mean i mean what a horrible world well i don't want to say a horrible world but it's like it's horrible out there isn't it fantasy takes you away and so you see a film like that you know you're transported that's what a good film does it's um you know from 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 the very beginning from the opening to the end you know you leave your body you're in the film you're with the characters hopefully so i hope that's what it does well i very much hope uh, to to well i very much look forward to seeing it like i say i was a big fan of krull in the 80s and uh you know i've often wondered why there are films not like that now but i've always thought well you know that might have something to do with the fact of of demand and maybe producers and directors just haven't thought that's there but you think differently uh yeah, I mean, uh, something new is needed, though. I mean, uh, I don't know, you know, something new. And, and hopefully this next film, Hawk the Hunter, might have it, okay? So you've just given uh, a slight clue, I say, obvious obvious clue as to what that might be called. I don't know, we're very happy Hawk with it. Hawk the Hunter. It's on Kickstarter at the moment, and um, so if people go to um, the, the Hawk the Hunter website, there's a Kickstarter thing, contribute a little bit. There's big prizes. Uh, I think one of them is uh, you win a part in the film, okay? And I understand also that you've had quite a bit of demand from actors that want to play parts in the movie too. If you're a hungry actor, you want to be in this film. That's me then. Okay. You uh, want to invest into the sequel, I understand. Yes. Why, why is that? Well, I was a huge fan of Hawk the Slayer as a consumer. So I went to see it at the cinema the first time around. This is the second time I've seen it at the cinema, 35 years later. Um, it stands the test of time as far as I'm concerned. And um, yeah, I was in a position to be able to, uh, with my computer games company, Rebellion, to, to try and get this off the ground. So we've invested a decent chunk of money in it. We're gonna be doing the CGI. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how the Kickstarter does. What is it about the movie that gives it, gives it its, its beauty? I think it's kind of, it's quite family friendly. You don't see much gore in it at all, which I think works well for, for high fantasy. Uh, yeah, everybody's riding everywhere. I don't know what happens to the horses when they have these scenes. So the horse is obviously held by somebody off scene. Um, and, and there's sort of an honesty. Uh, it's not particularly big in scope. So it kind of means that when you were younger, you could almost imagine adventures like that happening in the woods around from your house. Or you could go out with your friends, dress up, put plastic swords on and kind of emulate that. It was, it was kind of reachable and available and, and, and kind of quite immediate and physical. Um, and there's something about physical effects which I really like. I love CGI as well, obviously coming from 
the digital world and the computer games, but we also love physical effects too. Now, in that time, there were films like Conan the Barbarian, Krull. I was a big fan of Krull. I love that sword and sorcery. A lot of people love those kind of movies then. Do you think there's the same kind of desire to see these movies now? Well, I think what was interesting is Hawk the Slayer was the sort of beginning of all of that. And you can look at it and you can go, gosh, compared to some of the others, that was low budget. And it was genuinely low budget. Um, and others kind of went, wow, we can do that and we can do it better or bigger or, or, or differently. And so Kroll came along with that massive, that glaive, which is fantastic, and all of those scenes. Um, uh, and the sword and the sorcerer and the three-bladed sword. So, yeah, I, I think... Uh, I think there's a space in all of us for that kind of escapism and that, that kind of sort of honest fantasy. Uh, it's not too jaded, you know, the, the good guys are the good guys, the bad guys are the bad guys, and everybody knows which side they're on and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a charm, a sort of slightly naive charm to it, um, which, which in some movies these days kind of is missing sometimes. Um, there are obviously brilliant movies being made these days, but sometimes they're a bit complicated. And you're kind of left, left thinking, who are the bad guys and who are the good guys? And that may be a valid question to ask somebody in a movie. Um, but I also like the sort of the, 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 the straightforward simplicity. You might say the childlike simplicity of good versus evil stories. How about, must, might, might be a bit of a premature question, but what about the people that might play the parts in the next, in the next film? Well, we, we've, got a, we've got quite a long list of people we'd like to contact. We're, we're being a bit careful because we haven't raised all the money yet, so we don't want to contact people and say, you know, if we get the money, would you play a role? Yeah, we've had a few people already contact us and say they'd like to be in it. So uh, I, I am sworn to secrecy at the moment, um, partly because I'm not sure that anybody is definitely confirmed, uh, but mostly because it would be sort of unfair to mention some of the names, the bigger names that have contacted us, uh, because they turn out to be fans as well, which is really interesting. People of a certain age remember this, the original movie, as something that was special to them, and they want to be part of the next generation, a sort of passing on the baton to the next generation after them.